had a billion people connected to the internet through this laser-based fiber optic transmission system. The four of us did. Bob Bauer, Peter Schultz, Don Kirk, and me. And I'm the only black among the team in America that did this work. I'm lucky enough to be joined by one of the worldwide leaders in tech, Dr. Thomas Mensa, the founder of Fiber Optics, award-winning author, and worldwide genius, basically. So thanks so much for taking the time to talk to me today. Thank you, Vanessa. <laughs> Anytime you mention your name, you know I would respond. Thanks. So I wanted to start off with what was your journey before you started Fiber Optics and how did you get there? Well, my journey is very, very uh, simple. As, as I explain in this book, uh, the, my autobiography, The Rise of Comes in Black Two. I was born in Ghana, uh, Vanessa, in Kumasi. You know okay. Kumasi very yeah. well. So I started a junior high school and primary from that area, Kumasi, and then went into one of the best schools in Ghana called Adisara College, a disco. Uh, that's in Cape Coast. Okay. So I had to spend seven years in Cape Coast. So was it a boarding school? Yes, a boarding school, mostly for boys. And those schools in Cape Coast are the top schools in Ghana. And Famsipin is one of them. That's where Kofiana went to school. Oh, incredible. And I went to Adisara, we used to compete at the Sala and fancy to see who would be the best in engineering, science, and all the subjects. Oh, wow. I was, of course, winning prizes in all the subjects. I was always number one in science, and I also spoke French. Did you learn French at school? Yeah, and it's even more than that. When I was four years old, my dad was always reading to me newspapers. So at four I was reading newspapers. Wow. <laughs> you know, I like pronouncing the big words, you know, to impress the, 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 the older guys. And uh, my next door neighbor is from Togo. They speak French. Okay. So he was teaching French in Ghana. And so I, I, when I was eight, I was speaking French fluently. That's incredible. So, so everybody goes, oh, Vanessa, this guy, He's, he's different. Yeah. So that's how it started. So when I went to Adisco, I won the French competition nationally twice, O levels and A levels, as well as receiving all the prizes in science. And the French were following me. You know, the French were saying, look, everybody's going to UK, US, everyone. We got to get one of these Canadians who's good in science and bring him to France. But that was the, the, the real goal of the French in, in giving me a fellowship to France wow. to study chemical engineering. So for my disco, I went to Kwame Nkrumah University, uh, did chemical engineering there. And the French were still following me. So as soon as I finished, I graduated, they had given me my plane ticket, full scholarship, full fellowship to do postgraduate studies to France, one-way ticket. So when I when I was there, they made sure I didn't work part-time. You know, so they gave me stipend, room and board, you name it. You know, so I was treated very, very well in France. So that's part of my story. Okay. So I still speak French fluently. And when I graduated in France, I had a, a Another fellowship to go to MIT, one of the top schools in America. You know, it had a certificate in modeling and simulation of chemical processes. But my dad came to France and said, "Oh, I'd love for you to come to Ghana, but there are a lot of political changes in, in Ghana. You know, mm -hmm. yes. in the 70s, there's coup d'etats there, so go to America." And I thought that was one of the best advices. So with that fellowship to the U.S., when I graduated Ph.D. from Montpellier University in France, I went straight to MIT. At MIT, uh, I, I even served on the board when I uh, was on the board at MIT. Wow. All in chemical engineering. And then the professors, they are the ones that introduced me to industry. The okay. professors always consult. So luckily at that time, Corning, where fiber optics was 
invented was looking for somebody to solve a serious problem, a 15 year old problem. So when I get it, when I get it, uh, when I got to Corning, what they were doing was trying to basically uh, uh, move the technology of fiber optics from the laboratory to commercialization and industry. It took 15 years till I got there. So when I got there, they say, hey, Dr. Mensah, look, this is one of the serious challenges in making fiber optics. We can't move it. Anytime we try to move it from uh, lab rates of production, the glass is breaking. You know, mm -hmm. we reach two meters a second and that's the limit. We need to get higher. So I was put in charge of that project. You know, all the co-inventors with me, uh, Bob Mauer, Peter Schuess, and Don Keck did the initial work. I was the only black among the team. So Peter Schuess said, Doc, hey, it's all you. And so within one year, I've solved that problem. That my first <laughs> pattern and invention. After 15 years yes. of, of work. Yes. And it's always good when you have somebody from outside come and look at a problem. Yeah, they've got fresh yeah. eyes. Yeah, fresh eyes. And uh, I'm naive, 35 year old. I didn't know it was difficult. <laughs> <laughs> and so I had used a technique that I had developed. Uh, you know, the technique was making the, we call fiber optics applicator. You know, the glass, you melt the glass at 2,000 C and pull it like taffy, which is like your hair strand. But immediately you have to cool it and put a coating on it. You have a curable coating. You gotta put it on it fast. That's where the, 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 the bottleneck was. It reaches two meters of pulling rate, then it breaks. You know, they have a hundred million dollar plant. They cannot be, you know, wasting time, always stopping and, you know, and so when I made the coating applicator out of plexiglass initially, so I can see what's happening, never been done before. And in my simulation, we, need, we know mathematically that you have what is called vortices, because this is non-Newtonian flow. I don't want to get too technical. So you have vortices around this glass that, that's being pulled, create it because the coating is viscoelastic, elastic. And viscoelastic fluids but the mathematics will show you that you have these vortices as we have predicted predict mathematically using final element analysis. All right. But I was able to then see what's happening so lo and behold, wow, there's these vortices, that's real. And what I did new was to take a camera for the first time and videotape what's happening in the process. So I can watch it on TV later and say, aha, this is how I can solve it. So from that I developed a whole new design. They used to call it the Mensa system or Mensa user. And immediately that problem was solved. We moved from two meters to ten times the speed of production. Twenty meters a second. You know, I was a hero then. Yeah, was for the it's like revolutionary. Exactly. And now if you can pull it that fast, that technology is used worldwide now. If you can pull it that fast, that means you can bring the cost of production of fiber optics from one dollar a meter to 10 cents a meter, just like copper wires. So when I did that, they replaced all the copper cable in America with this new technology. How did that feel for you? That well, you've feel... literally changed the landscape of like the world. Oh, exactly. In fact, when CBS interviewed me in America, the first sentence was, this one of the engineers that revolutionized the internet. Mm -hmm. Because by so doing, that means that internet can take off instead of using copper cables where you cannot send pictures very much but using the laser based transmission system of a fiber optics where lasers are the ones that are transmitting Facebook pictures transmitted transmitted Instagram you know videos YouTube videos the bandwidth that means the information carrying capacity of, 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 of that transmission is bigger when you're using lasers. And what's interesting, Vanessa, is that means I can sit here and send a tweet in seconds. I can sit here and send a Facebook picture to China in seconds. 
because the data is tra is being transmitted at the speed of light. It's like it, it's so hard to get your head around it. But to think how many people now rely on social media. I mean, personally, my work is through social media. Yes, you know, change your world. We have changed the world. Yeah. The whole world. Now there are a billion people connected to the internet through this laser-based fiber optic transmission system. And the four of us did it. Bob Bauer, Peter Schultz, Don Kirk, and me. And I'm the only black among the team in America that did this work. So do you feel like you got the recognition that you deserved? Yeah, right now I'm getting it. Okay. Uh, because initially, uh, Wikipedia is the one that say, hey, this is, the, this is the doctor that did it. Mm -hmm. You know, because I had seven patents in six years, all on fiber optics. So well. Sometimes it takes people what, two years to get one. I have seven in six years, more than one a year. And that underlies this whole process of making the fiber optics cheaper and worldwide. In my second invention, I actually pushed the race to 50 meters a second. So amazing. Yeah. You know, I'm sitting down there and I say, well, we are using nitrogen purge gas on the applicator. Why don't I put something else? So I decided to put carbon dioxide instead of nitrogen. They are both inner gases, you know, and carbon dioxide is, 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 is used in many things as soluble. You know, okay. you use that to freeze hamburgers and all that. So I have CO2, and that took the process from 20 to 50 minutes a second and eliminated all bubbles that usually... Oh, it, slows down the yeah, the, yeah, the bubbles, the bubbles get uh, baked in, in the coating. You know, the UV, when the UV light sees the coating, it sets it up. If you have bubbles, it stays in. And you don't need the bubbles in the interface between the glass and the coating because you can lose some of your data. And so my second invention eliminated that. So you have bubble-free coating at 50 meters a second, very high speed, so you have enough. You can make enough for the whole world to be connected. Amazing. Thanks for that creation. <laughs> it's honestly like changed my life. So when did you decide to bring your knowledge back to Ghana? When, when the, the new president came in, in Nana Adankwa Kufuwa. He, he has visited me in the U.S. You know, my office was on the 41st floor, the tallest skyscraper. So he walked in my office, so we had a rapport right away. And as soon as he won, I said, this, this is the time to go. Because somebody I know is running the country. Yeah, you know, so, can get so I can done. get things done. Mm -hmm. Not only as a fiber optics inventor, as, as a, I'm also one of the few, I'm probably the only black with a book in nanotechnology. You know, that's another book of mine, you know, later we can talk about it. And so when he, when he won, I sent a hundred day agenda to him. You got to start this, 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 in hundred days. It's all been done in Ghana, oh, just because good. I have a rapport with him. So you talk to all my ministers, and I've been doing that. So what is what are you most excited about that you're starting in Ghana? I've heard about your high-speed train. Yes. Is that one of your most exciting? Yes. One of the proposals okay. I had in the 100-day agenda is Ghana should have a high-speed train to move it from where it is now into 21st century. So is there a train line already? where you want to take the train to, to Kumasi? Well, initially, we used to have the years ago, but these were locomotive, very slow, 20 meters a second, and these high-speed trains are going to go a minimum of 200 kilometers a second. Very, very fast. Yeah. It's actually half the speed of the bullet train in China, as well as in Japan. But if Ghana can have that, just like in, in, in Kenya, it means they can go from, from Kumasi, uh, Accra Kumasi, to Kumasi in one hour. Yeah, it's going to ch change hours. everything. It was transformational. Mm. And it will get to Tambale in the north in four hours. And that's interesting because you're going to have containers from the port that should go to parts of the country all the way to Burkina. They can be on a train, just like in Kenya, from Nairobi to Mombasa. And you can have passengers sitting on and join the ride. You can be in a train moving very fast and then being on their iPads, kids, everybody can enjoy. 
So will it be accessible to all? Exactly. Everybody can. Okay. Everybody who doesn't care about your party affiliation, if you get your ticket, you're on it, and you are aware of it. That's great. And when can we expect this train? I'm pushing very, very hard. I'm hoping, normally it takes three years. I'm hoping that we can have the train done from here all the way to the north in three years or two and a half years. I'm working very hard with the, you know, because of my proposals, they have established a railway ministry by itself. Don't put it on the transportation it's separate so it can focus on it. So they are working very hard, the railway ministry, I commend them. They've done a great job, you know, mm -hmm. they're working with me, listening to me, you know, because one thing that I'm doing also is to put fiber optics cable along the train. Oh, right. So wherever the train goes, you have fiber optics. Yeah, that, is, that will be so great as yeah. well. When I say it's not just to put the uh, internet cafes and all that in the train stations, yeah. you can branch off wherever you are to the mm, other yeah, areas. To and different have villages. And yeah, schools, hospitals, you know. So uh, that's very, very important. Another exciting invention or idea that you've got is for a, an aviation hub in West Africa. Yes, Vanessa. Because the entire West, West Africa doesn't have a hub where you can repair aircraft. You have to fly to all the way to Ethiopia, fly to South Africa, sometimes fly to Europe. And so we want to put the aviation hub in the middle of the country, Kumasi. And we are working with Boeing on it initially so that we can, uh, when the planes come here, from Ivory Coast, Mauritania, wherever they are from, from Nigeria, the engineers from where I went to school, Kwame Nkrumah University, mm -hmm. part of this, they would just inspect the aircraft. Okay. Look at all the instruments. If an instrument is not working, replace it. All the avionics, they do all that. Look at some of the mean, some of the composites and fiscal systems. For example, an airplane coming from uh, US, as soon as it took off, the landing gear caught on fire. So when, you don't want that to happen before you get in the air. So the hub, the aviation hub, will change the, the, the landing gear immediately, replace it before it even takes off. Yeah, not only is that great for um, West Africa yes. as a whole, it's great for Kumasi and creating employment. It's for going people. to create 400,000 400, wow. jobs. Yeah. That's a lot of jobs. A lot of jobs you know, to be created in that sector alone. The train will create about a million jobs. And these are technology transfer. Yeah. Where Boeing and is bringing the technology train Ghanaians to you know, fix these airplanes. And there's so many educated, university educated people here in Ghana, in Ghana. that are unemployed. That would, or, so that would be very easy. Uh, yeah, so it's them, great. Give them employment, give them practical skills, and the, uh, so I push that the king will too for or say to two. His Majesty gave me about 200 acres for the project. You know, that's like his equity, in it? Yeah. So we are seriously going to make this happen. Can't wait to see this this happened as well and you're the founder of the Silicon Valley of Ghana yes and Google AI have recently just come to Ghana and this year opened up um, a research center yes so what what does that mean for Ghana well it's 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 very important you know what we did when I came in I said all right I better create a Silicon Valley this was on a hundred day agenda okay so I created a Silicon Valley in Ghana to address Ghana's problems whether it's aviation, whether it's oh, right. okay. train, or whether it's even agriculture. So the Silicon Valley of Ghana is the lead innovation center in Ghana. Okay. As soon as I created it, Google decided, oh, we got to go to Ghana. There were five countries competing, South Africa, Ethiopia, Kenya, Ivory Coast, everybody, Nigeria, but Ghana won. The fact that I've created that Silicon Valley. And in the Silicon Valley, I have all the major universities, the advice chancellors and the advisory. That means we get all the universities, the Asseshi, Kwame Nkrumah University, Cape Coast, Ligon, you name it, Tamale. So they are all there to have input. And we would have a mini Silicon Valley that we've created, mini in those schools, to work with Google. You know, 
Now, this AI is a AI uh, center that Google has created in Ghana. It was announced on CNBC. It's a big deal. Mm -hmm. Because now, with that, they are bringing everybody in Africa to come and learn AI here. You know, okay. Af this will be the first AI location in entire Africa. All ideas, all new ideas, all big things will come from this Silicon Valley. I talked about it. You saw how floods, there are floods in Ghana from time to time. You saw that, yeah. it's a big deal. So I propose that we got to use this large concrete underground drainage system, you know, just like London, just like New York. These are big cities, you don't have floods. Mm -hmm. But putting these large underground concrete systems there, it means all the drainage will go there and we won't have those floods. I proposed it during my speech. So all those new things, that, that's game-changing things, mm -hmm. will come from Silicon Valley. Not only myself, but everybody involved in Silicon Valley. So you have the AI, which Google is doing, and we are doing some, you know, we are doing what is called Internet of Things, IoT. Okay that we are introducing. You go to you go to Silicon Valley, you see that. In fact we've developed a watch, me and some Indian colleagues. You wear the watch, it's Internet of Things for the home. So what happens on the watch? On the watch, this watch is even better than the, the Apple watch by watch. Apple. Because now this watch will control things in your house. Oh, so the nice. first time I demonstrated it, you know, when you're wearing a watch because what we, do, we did was actually digitize the hand. In my speech, you could see in my presentation the hand being digitized and the motion on it. So that if oh, I so you can just do different motions and motions different things. Motions and something <laughs> happen. Let's say you are exercising on your bike listening to music. You want to change the music. You do this and it changes from Beyonce music to Rihanna <laughs> or some other, other yeah. music. Yeah. And then you can even change the lights in your house. You do this, the lights brighten, you do this, it comes down. And importantly, if I want to change the television channel, I do this, and the, the television channels change. Nobody has that in there. We are the only one. It's so exciting that that is coming from Ghana. Yes, and this is the IoT, the Internet of Things for the home. I can even do this and lock all my doors. Such a great idea. Yes. <laughs> I need this. Uh -huh. And oh uh, of course, has the other stuff, you know, uh, health characteristics, you know, oh, yes. and Steps. all that in, the, in addition to what I've said. So, are you going to make that a commercial, commercially available? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Product? Right now, uh, we have uh, we have a company called Hug, you know, uh, Hug Innovations. That's going to sell worldwide. Wow, another big thing coming from you. Yeah. So, so the the Silicon Valley of Ghana, the way we set it up, everybody will go there for innovation. Everybody, Google, the others, Apple is coming, you know. And I tell even grown-ups, I say, look, you go to Silicon Valley, home, go all the way down, you see robots jumping on tables. Let your kid watch that. And these robots are jumping on table, doing flip-flops. So that excites the, the child. Yeah, and then they, they might want to get they into... They might get into it. Hey, she said, oh, mommy... Uh, engineering. Why is it doing this? So the software that we code, that we write, is telling the robot, you know, flip, do somersault, jump from table, and that's how you get them. Yeah. So kids all the way the to adults... coding. Yeah, can benefit, can benefit from, from this Silicon Valley and so is there anything, maybe the infrastructure of Ghana, or anything holding it back in terms of advancing in technology? Right now, no. I got everything I need because what we did is to go to Kofi Annan Centre and use all the computers and everything there as a basis for this. Okay. All that is required is innovation, the creative things that come out of it. So you have IoT. In fact, there's the Railway University there somebody want to work in the railways, they can go there, you're doing the railway ministry, mm -hmm. go there and say, these are the skills I need to have and learn. The aviation is there. We are also even doing telemedicine okay. at this, uh, uh, this center. Telemedicine where we have doctors in UK, doctors in Mayo Clinic in America, 
working with doctors in Ghana, you know, Kolibu. So they'll see that on the screen and, and, and look at one problem that, you know, three heads are better one. Different, yeah, they different have doctors, doctors say, oh, I've seen that before, you know, this patient. You know, That's so they can idea. resolve all this. Even it's, uh, you know, you have NMR, we are looking at MR images, and the doctors will be looking at it together. So, this telemedicine piece is very, very important. I have two, actually, four board of advisors who work in telemedicine. I have a U.S. astronaut, wow. Bobby Here Satcher. <laughs> yeah, U.S. astronaut, Bobby Satcher, who is working in, 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 in Houston, Texas. Okay. At, at, the, at, at the NASA Center there. He's part of, he's on the board. He's, he's one of the leaders in telemedicine. Of all these guys, you know, working with us, bringing the nation from all over the world that are part of this. Thanks so much for letting me know about what you're up to at the moment, but also your creations in the past. I really appreciate your time today. Sure, and by the way, this book, chapter 10, has all the details <laughs> And the book is going to be launched by the king, by the king himself in Kumase. And when we are launching it, Vanessa, a drone to bring this stool from the sky all the way to land in Manchia Palace. You are the first to see this. And when it lands, lo and behold, you open it and you have the book in it. it That's a really, down. really nice idea. Yeah. Comes down and I love the fact the book fits, fits. perfectly and it's made specially yes. for your book. And it's just two, it's an account too. No, made in Kumasi. So definitely check out The Right Stuff Comes in Black by Dr. Thomas Mensah. If you want to hear about his life story, his inventions and the modern day internet explosive growth. Yeah. And by the way, we've taken the title of the book and we are placing it on t-shirts, on everything. Mm. So there's look, merchandise. Yeah, look at look at look at my hat. It says the right stuff comes in black too. You know, and Vanessa, you are definitely going to have one of these. Oh, thanks. Because we want you to wear it. It says the right stuff comes in black too. Oh, thanks. Yes, very much. You, you, you put it on your chest. Oh, that's nice, and it says that it includes, includes me. me. There you the go. Right stuff comes in black too. Yeah. Thanks so much. Please hit that subscribe button and feel free to watch more Ghana videos. I have a whole playlist of Ghana videos and you can just click here to find more. Thank you so much for watching.